Hey, welcome to Isolation Comedy by Comedy Wham. We've been doing this for three months now. Time does not exist. Uh, Texas <laughs> is opening up uh, because uh, we thought it was over. Uh, highest, highest boom in one single day was Texas yesterday. So if your friends are out and they're like, oh, it's fine. Tell them to get back inside here and tell them about the show, okay? Hashtag isolation <laughs> comedy. How fun and safe is that? What is Comedy Wham? Well, Comedy Wham is Austin's comedy. They release podcasts, articles, album reviews, and host live events. Um, do it on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. Do it on Tuesday and Fridays. That's us. That's uh, us right now. We're doing that. Except uh, we don't do it on Tuesdays anymore. But thank you for having us in your house. <laughs> Uh, this is not a stand-up show. Uh, sometimes if this was a stand-up show, you, I, you would come to my place and I'd be like, shut the fuck up. If you say anything, I'll make fun of you. And <laughs> buy two drinks, you son of a bitch. You don't. Uh, and, and shut the fuck up. But we would love you to drink as much as you want and uh, hop over there in the chat and say hello. Say, hey, how am I doing? Uh, I feel so lonely, so I will be in that chat right now. I had a conversation with my boyfriend's nephew uh, because I will talk to anyone at this point. He's three, so his whole thing is that he can count to three, and everybody's acting like, oh, this is cool shit. And so I said, uh, hey, hey, a cold, do you know how old I am? And he said, no because he doesn't care about anybody but himself. And I said, I'm 30. And he said, I don't know how much that is. So I said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And he said, whoa, 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 whoa. And then I said, fuck you, Cole. I look good. I look really good. And then he said, yes. So that kid's probably going to be gay as hell or some shit like that. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Let me tell you about how fucking free the show is. It's so free. So uh, thank you for being here. If you would like to contribute and you're like, I don't know who I love so much. Um, if you go and you type in the Venmo right there, right there, um, you can just, we, Comedy Ram doesn't take anything and then they distribute it at the end of the show. If you do have a comic that you like, Venmo them and put a little, little saucy message in there, all right? Because people read money. That's just a fact. <laughs> I never not read money. It's uh, one of my whole things. <laughs> I read money. So uh, if you want to call me a son of a bitch and a person who's wearing a dirty shirt, that's fine. Just send some money and, and, uh, and let me know about that. Um, one other joke that I wanted to try is, um, does anybody else not trust their grandma when they tell you about what happened in World War II? <laughs> um, um, because you'll be like, what happened in World War II? And then she'll be like, we didn't have a lot of metal. <laughs> she's like, come on, what about the Nazis? What about the war? And she's like, oh, no, we didn't have as many Christmas presents. She was like, what? What? <laughs> I mean, I, I thought that when some like big event happened, everybody had a cool story. But uh, then the pandemic happened, and I can tell you about this gay meth man who owns a bunch of lions and uh, makes great all <laughs> meth. Okay, uh, feedback noted. I'll work on it. How about some excellent comedians, though? Um, we have a good show. It's 10, 10 comics long. Everybody's doing six minute sets. They know that, but now you know that too. Um, let me tell you about this first comedian coming up. She has been on Moon Tower, Fun 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 Fest, reigning a fantastic fest nerd, rope rap champion. Ooh, a rapper? <laughs> Fuck yes. I hope she roasts me. Check out new song, Ted Cruz is the Zodiac Killer on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com. Hashtag Versace Colacci. Give it up for Kat Remzinski. Woo! Yeah. Hey, everyone.
everybody. Um, super excited to be here during this Corona. I have to be honest, this is so fucking weird to me, the whole coronavirus thing, because everybody's like so positive. And they're like, oh, I'm I'm stuck in inside. If you want to play something, go ahead. What? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah oh, okay. Someone just asked. I think I'm hearing fucking voices. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, guys. Hey, you know what? It's fine. Um, I'm very high right now. I have to be honest. <laughs> this quarantine thing, and this is just me speaking from the heart. This is not a joke. Um, it's everybody's so upset. They're like, I can't go outside. I'm stuck inside all day. I'm miserable. I'm here 24-7. My sleep schedule's backwards. Like, everyone's saying this shit. And I'm like, this is how I live my whole life. Like legitimately, this is my job requires me to just be home all day. And I don't really leave the house anyway. And I also don't really talk to people <laughs> and I don't really go anywhere. And I order a lot of things out. So to me, this is just like a normal situation. And to see how upset the rest of the world is <laughs> at it makes me go, oh my God, like my best case scenario is their worst case scenario. <laughs> and it's like a very strange experience because the more I'm seeing people get upset, the happier I'm becoming. So I feel like Tinkerbell, almost like the more people COVID takes, the stronger I get. <laughs> I'll regret that one later, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> It's seriously been really hard to write jokes through this, but we got that Disney Plus network thing and we started watching um, The Mandalorian and we just finished it. And I remember when I first saw it, I was like, oh my God, Baby Yoda. Like I got really excited at Baby Yoda. Like he's the cutest thing I've ever seen. And I remember like turning to my boyfriend and being like, oh my God, this makes me want our own Baby Yoda. And since I love cigarettes, I'm thinking we can make this happen. Like, if I get pregnant and smoke enough, I'm almost positive I will get a replica of Baby Yoda. And I will love it as my own. And this joke always gets weird at this next part because um, I found something out about Baby Yoda and it's not really a spoiler. And that's what pisses me off is they don't tell you in the Mandalorian. It's just something you're supposed to fucking know. And I hate stuff like that. It's like, tell me so I know. I don't want to hear about it later. And that is that the Baby Yoda is not actually a baby. It turns out he's fucking 50 years old. <laughs> The baby Yoda is a 50 year old man. And when I heard that, like the first thing I thought was like, yes, because that means we can fuck the baby Yoda, you guys. Like, <laughs> legally, I can make love to baby Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to, because he looks like a giant floating anal bead. Like, it's obvious what he was made for. Yeah, um, <laughs> this is going well. <laughs> I watch a bunch of those old Disney princess like things, and I can definitely tell how fucked up I've become as an adult because I did watch The Lion King, and the difference between being a kid and watching it and being an adult and watching it is as a kid, like I cried a lot when Mufasa died. But as an adult, I just maniacally laughed. Like, I could not stop. <laughs> and it's like, I feel really dark. But then I saw the parts where, like, the birds dress the princesses in the morning on the other movies. I, I kept thinking, like, who the fuck wants that? You know? <laughs> like a, princess, a princess is supposed to be something that you attain to, right? It's like a heightened sense of self. Like, you are now a part of a fucking monarch. Like, live like one bitch. You have mice serving <laughs> and all I can think is like that's how you're gonna have the plague. And then the birds come in and like I just have bad luck, so they probably just peck at me a lot and not dress me and I just make it and covered in wounds. So I feel like being a Disney princess isn't actually that cool. Like I just don't like the idea of a shitload of birds around me. <laughs> but at the same time, 
no, I don't want birds to dress me up in the morning, but I do constantly think about tiny baby shrimp cleaning my body at night. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking cool. And I don't know why they don't offer that. <laughs> and I like to keep going on birds because I have a lot of feelings about birds. Uh, most of them negative. First of all, um, a bird had the last comedy show I did, a bird shit on my head. <laughs> I was walking into it and an improver told me like, oh my God, that is fucking good luck for a bird's feces that like the stuff the bird ate all day, like worms, <laughs> bugs, <laughs> it probably nested, it probably walked around some dirty fucking parking lots and this bird ate this shit. And then made the shit in its tiny little bird body and then festered in the sun flying around all day doing bird shit. And then it literally did bird shit on my head and the feast <laughs> that came out of its ass was dripping down my face. And an improv kid said, again, they said, this is good luck to have fecal <laughs> matter from a flying rat on your face. <laughs> Now, the first thing I said, because I'm a good person, I said, yes, and. <laughs> oh, my God. But then I started thinking, like, this is a really good way to get pink eye. And speaking of pink eye, I do have a boyfriend. And the way I met him was I actually, well, I had a black eye. I walked into a bar and I had this black eye. And. The thing is, when you're trying to meet guys and you have a black eye, it never works because they look at you and they go, oh, she's taken, you know. And then <laughs> I, I went into this bar and I met him and now he's my boyfriend and he's here and he was invited to do a sexy dance, um, but he will definitely show under boob. And I think my time is up, right? Okay, thanks, bye. Woo! Happy Give it up for Chad. That was great. I think, I think that uh, improvisers need a little luck, you know? One time I was shit on by a bat. And, uh, and you got thrown up. Guys are all, yeah, uh, in quarantine now. Uh, bringing it down, bringing it down. Much better. Uh, 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 this next comic it was featured on Portlandia. Uh, she's the founder of Portland Queer Comedy Festival. Give it up for Belinda Carroll. Woo! Woo! Hey, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Yay! This is only my second Zoom show, and so it's completely bizarre to me so far. It feels it feels a little like a recovery meeting as well, so we might lapse into it. Um, <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to be here. I, uh, I, I all I've been doing for the last three months is just eating peanut butter cups in my in my bedroom, and I've got to stop doing that because I've gained 40 pounds since I started listening to Lizzo. <laughs> It's, it's the worst. I, uh, so I did my last show on uh, March 11th, and then I started working for an emergency uh, houseless shelter. And so that's been a total trip. I feel like a, uh, the protagonist in a Russian novel all of a sudden. Like all, I, all I'm doing is, is taking care of people. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but my, um, my uh, entire dating criteria has changed now. I used to look for a girl that had like a nice 401k. She had a good five-year plan. Now I'm like, do you, do you know how to skin a squirrel? I mean, can you skin a squirrel? You can do it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So anyway, so yeah. So I have gained a solid 40 pounds. Like it's been like they closed all the hiking trails. They blocked all the lesbian ways to keep in shape. <laughs> do I'm like I can't camp. I don't know what to do now. And uh. And so, and I don't really even care. I feel like I got too thin there for a while. Like I got thin enough that white guys started getting. Like, 
<laughs> it's disconcerting. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a there's a very fine line, and some people know about this. There's a very fine line. And I remember the day it happened, I was getting out of the minivan, uh, going to the arc. And this dude rushes to open the door for me, which seems like a nice gesture. But the thing is, I'm a lesbian. This is like developing a superpower that I never wanted. <laughs> just like the ability to manifest just a shit ton of cilantro for no reason. Just like, what do you do with as much cilantro? And for like 80% of the population, cilantro is a fine garnish. But for 20% of the population, that shit tastes like soap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, so I, um, I uh, had a friend of mine who uh, she produces the comic strip show here. And uh, if you don't know comic strip, some, some cities do it, some cities don't. So you tell your jokes and you take off a piece of clothing and then you go back into your act. And uh, so I've done the show before, but she was like, hey, do you think we should try it like in this atmosphere? Like it's a Zoom show. And I was like, I didn't want to do it because I was like, Bitch, I've been in quarantine for three months. This shit looks like the yard around an abandoned building. <laughs> like, it's just the grass is all overgrown. There's like two pit bulls fighting for no reason. There's like a broken down Camaro. <laughs> There's no trespassing. Is this working or not working? I can't tell. I hate these fucking shows. <laughs> this, is like, this is like the the weirdest webcam work. Like I'd be like, can I, can I do something myself that's a little less awkward than just talking to myself? Yeah, I'm thinking about looking like my mother. I I'm 44, which is a fucking weird age to be. Like I feel like I'm just like uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm like a grown up club kid, which is just straight. Like, I feel like I'm in between the age between like wearing hot pants to a club or like stiffing a little tissue at my sleeve for later. It's very. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I'm really glad that this, uh, this whole quarantine didn't happen in my 20s because I would be going fucking insane. Um, shout out to anybody that's going insane because they hate leaving their house. This kind of works for me. I'm like, later I'm just gonna put my robe on and I'm gonna watch this nine hours of Antiques Roadshow and that will be my evening. Um, anybody else super into Antiques Roadshow? No, no one. <laughs> uh, how the hell do I wanna end this whole thing? I think I'm just gonna bow out. I've been Belinda Carroll, thank you, bye. Woo! Woo! We have a couple more comics left. Uh, this next one is producer of Wendy Peach Comedy online writing classes now available wendypeach.com. Give it up and make a lot of noise in your own house for <laughs> Santa Gordon. Oh my gosh, hello. This has been so much fun so far. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I have been isolating, living alone, mm, not to brag. Um, but the thing that I'm most concerned about right now, honestly, is not the virus. The thing I'm concerned about is that for the last few months, I've been getting issues of Vanity Fair, Vogue, Shape Magazine, Rachel Ray every day. <laughs> Yeah. I did not order, and um, you guys, it's gotten, it's gotten really excessive, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm spending a lot of time looking at these magazines that I honestly, I know that I didn't order them, but I also don't know who they're for, because the <laughs> content is absolute trash, can I just say that? Um, I'm going to do something kind of risky. And I'm going to share my desktop so I, I can show you something. And when you know that you've got my desktop up, 
let me know. It's going to be so much fun. Okay, here we've got the screen now, right? We all see me and what's on my screen? Okay, we see the picture in picture and the screen. Okay, don't worry about what you saw. Okay. So inspired by these magazines. This is bad advice with me. And boarded. <laughs> If you've ever seen a magazine targeted toward a human being, it's all about dicks. Every single magazine cover is about how to make him come. <laughs> um, and it's exhausting. Um, you'll see every single one of these magazines. Sex tips, sex tips, sex tips, sex tips. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've highlighted my favorite sex tips. And I've given them a fun street name. So we're going to go through them. <laughs> Number one, try tapping his penis back and forth like you're volleying a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> I call this the Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, tell your man you need some change. Then stick your hand in his pocket and touch his penis through the fabric while you pretend to dig for quarters. It's like a salt, but for a very small amount. <laughs> uh, bonus tip, whisper something in his ear like, is that a roll of quarters in your pocket? Or are you just glad to see me? Mm. They, they published this in a magazine. Someone was paid to write this. Yeah. It's called the prick pocket. <laughs> Next up, uh, during oral, instead of just bobbing up and down, try shaking your head from side to side for a full spectrum experience. I call that the wet dog. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell he's very concerned about where her teeth are at. Um, number four, dip your breasts in body paint and use them to sponge paint his entire body or his bedroom, depending on how big your areolas are. Um, <laughs> the moan <laughs> <laughs> um, I like that her boobs kind of look like glazed donuts because so do mine. Um, all right, tip number five place his penis through the hole of a donut, my favorite, and then eat the donut off. Mm, I call this the horny Homer or the da o nut. <laughs> Um, pro tip, don't try this with a toasted bagel. It will not work with a toasted bagel. I repeat, do not do this with a toasted bagel. <laughs> Number six, sprinkle a little pepper under his nose right before he finishes. Ooh, because you know how they always warn you, right? No. <laughs> they never tell you. Um, fun fact, whenever a guy asks me where I want him to come, I play a fun prank and I go, to dinner with my parents. <laughs> um, and he doesn't like it. <laughs> Just kidding. I make him come in the trash can where it belongs. Um, okay. So go a little pepper under his nose. Sneezing and orgasms are closely linked, so it'll double the pleasure. This is Sergeant Pepper's spicy cum time band. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you can tell I've been alone a long time by how fat the ass I drew was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're almost done here. Number eight, wrap them tightly in a bed sheet so they can't do anything with their arms. <laughs> Just kidding, don't do this. That's the barit no. It's not sexy. It's horrible. Don't do that. And last but not least, after sex, pick up your underwear from the floor and use it to tie your hair back. It'll show that you're fun, casual, easygoing, and absolutely trash. The up do me. <laughs> All right. So that's what I've learned from Cosmo Magazine in this last few weeks. Um, it's a lot of what not to do when you get to be around another person again. Um, but I'll be honest, I'm 
I'm I've been satisfied just by my own drawing, so I don't need to do anything else. <laughs> okay, well that's all I prepared for you guys tonight. Thank you for taking this little magazine journey with me. If anyone needs some collage materials, I have a lot. Let me know. Um, and with that, I've been Sam Gordon. Thank you guys so much for having me. This has been so much fun. Sam Gordon. Yeah. What uh, what this straight equivalent of uh, poppers were? I didn't realize it was pepper. How straight sex works. <laughs> How fun. Me learning. A uh, couple comics left. Uh, this next person was a two-time FBI semi-finalist and professional handsome young boy. Give it up for Jake Rowe. Everybody, thank you for coming out of your, you know, robes, bathtubs, showers, hot tubs, wherever you were, you know, trying not to drown yourself inside your head. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, guys, a little bit about me. Uh, I treat spiders like I treat my ex-girlfriends. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, <laughs> I respect them, of course. I, you know, hope they're doing well. Uh, but if I see one in person, I'm going to kill it. <laughs> so, <laughs> not not emotionally responsible or mature. Uh, you know, before all this started, right now, like nobody's traveling, but there are still places that you hate to travel. Uh, before this all started, I was accurately talking about how much of a garbage city Amarillo is, and this girl she overheard me. She got very upset. She said, "Hey, I'm from Amarillo. Amarillo is a great city." I said, "Okay." Name one good thing about Amarillo. She said the night sky in Amarillo is so beautiful. Can't be beat. Can't be beat. I said, all right. Uh, if the best part about your city is outer fucking space, uh, that's a garbage ass city. Yeah. Fun fact, most of those stars are dead. You know why? Because they had to shine their light on Amarillo. It's not a good time. <laughs> Even if we're allowed to travel again, do not go. It's not worth it. <laughs> uh, totally unrelated, but do you do you guys know about classical conditioning? Y'all heard about this shit? It's classical conditioning. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the most famous example is that of Pavlov's dog. Uh, basically, there was this guy, we'll call him Pavlov. He did an experiment where he would ring a bell and then he'd give his dog a treat. And he did that so much that over time, it got to the point that every time the dog heard the bell, it would salivate, have a natural reaction to the sound of the bell. See, I have a similar thing because I exclusively do pain in public bathrooms. So <laughs> now, I, I just come up with like movie script app ideas and boat names. Super exciting. Uh, I actually just started paying a dude to pee in front of me and uh, turns out way more expensive than cocaine, guys. Way more. Yeah. <laughs> Craigslist is not your friend. <laughs> also, speaking of cocaine, I wonder how many people nowadays think that I have COVID-19 just because I'm walking around constantly just coughing and, you know, sniffling. But it's just I'm a coke addict that's chain smoking all the time. But it's <laughs> fun to just walk through all my terrifying people and them thinking that I just went to the store instead of that I'm just a drug addict. It's very fun. It's very fun. Uh... Also, guys, a little bit about me. Before this whole thing started, I was not already in a great place. You know, in the couple months before quarantine started, I, you know, I'd been broken up with. I'd been dumped. I had been robbed. And I, you know, found out I had hemorrhoids, uh, which sucked. Oh, but, wow. yeah, there was a bright side. On the bright side, I did realize that I don't have depression. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Hold your applause, everyone. Uh, the way I realized that I don't have depression is I've always heard that people with depression are really good at hiding it. 
and people tell me I look sad all the time. So you can see me. We'll be happy to have another audience. Coming. <laughs> Apparently, I'm great. Uh, no, my girlfriend, she did actually break up with me right before the quarantine. And for the few weeks, I wasn't really doing anything. I had a lot of time to just think about it, think about what went wrong. And I think I figured it out. And what I think happened was right before we broke up, we had recently discussed trying anal sex for the first time. And she said she was, she was going <laughs> to. And I think I was just a little too quick to say, oh, I don't mind. So... <laughs> trying to comfort her to think it had a effect. It's just a little <laughs> draw there. Uh, but no, now I'm single uh, on the apps, on the dating game, you know, fucking <laughs> like, is anyone else so bad at talking to girls you read books for help? <laughs> no. I don't mean self-help books, okay? I mean serial killer biographies. <laughs> I mean, say what you will about the guys, they know how to charm a lady, all right? Lady killers, <laughs> all of them, most of them. Also, like, I wish I had something unique about me, something to set me apart, but I don't. Like, you can all see my face right now. I'm, I'm just a pretty average looking guy. Like, like, if you've ever played the Wii and you go to create a character, just the default character looks exactly like me. It's insane. It's like video game scientists came together and were like, all right, mathematically, that's a blank slate of a person right there. <laughs> and my body is just kind of blah, you know? Like, <laughs> it'd be great if I was in really good shape because, you know, girls are into that. But it'd also be cool <laughs> if you fat. Some girls are into that. But nobody's into what I got going on here. Like, like my body... My body's like an unmade bed, you know? It only takes a couple of minutes every day to make it look good, but if nobody what's the point, you know? <laughs> It'd be cool if I had like a tattered past or something, if I was a bad boy, but I'm not. I'm wearing fucking jean shorts. Like, I'm not a bad boy. The only girls who think that I'm a bad boy are super Christian girls. They're like, mmm. He smokes cigarettes and says the fuck word. Oh, I like it. <laughs> but they don't put out, so fuck them. It's <laughs> 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 about time for me to get out of here. Uh, just want to say thank you so much for yeah, watching. Oh, shit. Hey, oh, what shit. Are you doing? What's up, guys? Are you doing a show? Yeah. Oh, you're uh, okay. yeah. yeah. No, we're Sorry. Coming, you're coming uh, here to talk. We're coming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I snuck in. I didn't tell you. I didn't. Okay, but this. Oh, fuck. Um. <laughs> 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 Undeniably, Copy. <laughs> look at that. That is, you can't. I don't. You know, we should give him a set. Oh, he's too hot. Oh. He's also very scared of all the thunder. So I'm gonna let him go hide underneath the chair. Um, this is isolation comedy stress. We got uh, two, three more. Talk to you guys. Um, if you would like, to get the paper, great. That's it. Right down there. If you'd like to uh, subscribe, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, it's backwards. I'm sorry, guys. Just <laughs> click on the links. Click on the links. You guys got to Twitch. What the fuck is Twitch? Two months ago, you said Twitch. I did not know what it is. Now I'm doing a show here. Hey, how about the next comic? Co writer of Latino Card Revoked, recently featured for Tom Green. 
in the before time. Give it up for Tori Poole. Everybody's enjoying their pandemic. Um, I've been doing great. Uh, I haven't worn a bra since this whole thing started. Uh, it's been great. That and sports bras, I'm just doing my part to flatten the curve. Um, <laughs> my uh, I love going braless, but after a couple of days, I'll put on a bra just to feel something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Remind myself that I'm alive. <laughs> um, I realized early on that I'm not the best person to talk about COVID-19, you know? One of my family members was asking what I thought the worst case scenario might be. And I said, well, I mean, society could break down, homelessness, you know, mass incarceration. Uh, we might have to eat the dog. And they just got really quiet. And then they said, mom. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing my thoughts with them. Uh, I have been doing a couple of online shows. Recently, the host uh, brought me up by saying, what are you? <laughs> Which yeah. was really interesting oh. to know that COVID-19 allows us to be racially ambiguous. Um, she was very confused. and. Bless her heart, she asked me where my holy water was, and then she asked me where my crucifix was, and I couldn't figure out if she thought I was Mexican or a vampire hunter. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, been thinking a lot about culture. I do identify as Peruvian, Mexican, and Spanish, but I get mixed reviews when I tell people that I'm just PMS. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I don't get along with a lot of Latino men. Uh, we just bump heads. I don't know what it is. Every time I meet a Latino, uh, they kind of come up to me and they stand in front of me and they kind of just go, <laughs> and then I go, Ugh. Uh, and then it becomes a weird Highlander moment where there can be only one of us. And uh, I mean, they win, right? I say, like, honestly, you're wearing basketball shorts and it's always like, it's every time of year, basketball shorts. Uh, I don't understand the basketball shorts, so I like to ask them to see their jump shot. Spoiler alert, they don't have one. Yeah, these are going great. Um, let's see. I do not like to date Latino men because I'm worried that we might be related. My dad got around. Um, but I did date my fair share. It seemed like everyone that I chose uh, was already in a long-term serious relationship uh, with their mothers, so <laughs> it would never work out. Um, I do have issues. I do have daddy issues with Latino men, but I don't think my dad was trash. Uh, he taught me the power of my mind at a really young age. I remember he was visiting one time and I had the hiccups. I used to get the hiccups really bad for no reason and I could not get rid of them. And he happened to be there and he looked at me and he said, girl, uh, because he didn't know my name. And he just, you know, like pat me on the head and he was like, girl, how do you get rid of hiccups? is you just don't think about them and they go away. Uh, yeah, guys, he hiccuped our family away. It's me, I'm cold. <laughs> okay, daddy, I'm sure cool. Um, I am married, I've been married for 13 years. Uh, no applause is needed, he's older and white. I thought he'd be dead by now. Um, <laughs> Still alive. Uh, being married to a white guy has been pretty cool. Uh, I married the first one that would have me. Too bad he's from Corpus Christi, Texas, which means he's pretty much Mexican, guys. Um, yeah, he did give me the last name pool, which is super good uh, because it makes me excellent at job interviews that are over the phone. 
Uh, but I also think I'm the diversity hire, you know, on that brochure uh, when I get the job. Just trying to hit. Okay, cool. No, no. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Mary, Mar marriage is hard, especially during the mm -hmm. pandemic. Like I was eating dinner with my husband the other day and I just watched him chew for five minutes. Uh, and then I, I prayed that he would choke. Uh, so that was weird. <laughs> Uh, we do have a kid together. I like to call him the boy that lived. <laughs> a little bit Harry Potter too. He's living his best pandemic, guys. Like he is sleeping all day, playing video games all night. Meanwhile, I am furiously checking his grades to see what I got in English for seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> I am a high school dropout that used to teach high school. Uh, Texas will hire anyone. <laughs> um, I used to joke the best part of my job was trying to figure out which one of my coworkers was going to sleep with a student. <laughs> Texas does lead in inappropriate relationships with students, guys. We are finally <laughs> leading an education somewhere. <laughs> I do worry about coaches that are, you know, no longer, that statistic is probably going down. They don't have access to their kids, but I do hope that someone is teaching them TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I have my timer that went off before that little sad thing went off. So I'm say, thank you so much, guys. I hope you're having a good pandemic. <laughs>
I happen to enjoy a private Facebook group called This Cat is Chonky. <laughs> Some of you know it. Some of you are clearly pretending not to know it, maybe because of who you're with. I get it. Just blink twice. I'll see. Okay, great. For those of you who really don't know it, This Cat is Chonky is a private <laughs> Facebook group dedicated to the celebration and uplifting of plus size cats and the relevance of the lives we lead together. It's a very body positive place. There's no fat cat shaming allowed. And it's the <laughs> nicest, most supportive place on the internet. So I dig this, right? And I told my husband about it because he's a cat daddy and he would be into it. Two weeks later, I'm circling back with him, catch up on everything he's seen in Chonky Cat Land. He tells me <laughs> he has gone on and joined over two dozen more private niche cat Facebook groups. More than two dozen. What could they be, you are asking me? I will give you some examples. All right, we got this cat is chonky, right? That's our basic fat cats. That's our gateway drug. You know about that one now. But then we've got ones like this cat is slonky. It's for very stretched out cats. Maybe they're yawning. Maybe they're in a sunlight spot. They look like very tall gentlemen. Then we've got ones like this cat is soggy, and that's just wet cat after wet cat. <laughs> pissed off wet cats. They're so angry. Until we get to my favorite group called this cat is really chonky. <laughs> and this cat is really chonky. was started by a bunch of expatriates from the original this cat is chonky <laughs> Facebook group. <laughs> and they started it because they believed that the admins in that original group were not strictly enough enforcing the fatness requirements for the cats in the pictures being posted. <laughs> <laughs> so, for example, right, they'd let someone post a picture of like a little skinny kitten with a note that said something like, hey guys, this is Jester, he's my future chunk. But these expats are in the comment section going, no, you're a chonk when you're a chonk and everything else is fucking bullshit. Get that kid out of here. <laughs> and this is angry enough that they started a splinter cell called this cat is really chonky. <laughs> they could better enforce their fat cat orthodox worldview, spread it across the globe. <laughs> Yeah, when they came for the skinny cats. <laughs> Thank you, people who studied World War II regret poetry. When they came for the skinny cats, I said nothing. <laughs> because my cats were not skinny. <laughs> when, they came, when they came for the hairless cats, still I said nothing. <laughs> because those things are fucking creepy. All right, guys, my name is Blair Bush, but that's just about yeah. my time. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs>
Hello, my name is Keith Lowell Jensen and I write autobiographical fan fiction. <laughs> All the jokes are gonna be like that. We're just gonna have to wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> good, we'll go through my six minutes quicker. Uh, Shakespeare famously said all the world's a stage, but I don't think he ever did a Zoom show. <laughs> I'd reassessed. Uh, I've been doing a lot of writing while I'm on quarantine. I'm working on a country western song. Uh, I've only gotten as far as the title, but I like it. It's called Her Safe Word Was Goodbye. <laughs> if anyone knows a few chords on the guitar and some words that rhyme with goodbye hit me up afterwards we'll do this <laughs> been writing a lot of suicide notes <laughs> <laughs> thank you don't worry about me or anything i'm fine uh no really i just uh I'm a fan of the genre thought i'd take a stab at it <laughs> came up with one i think is pretty good it goes uh goodbye you can have my records, but I'm taking all my pills. Kisses. <laughs> like the rest of you during this time, I am trying to be positive, trying really hard to think positive. Like if one of you was negative right now, if one of you were to yell out at me, hey, don't quit your day job, I would assume that the rest of that sentence was, because you made me a latte the other day and it was delicious. <laughs> You're an artist, got the foam dialed in and everything. Uh, I am a married person and I've been with my wife for 26 years. We've been together now. And uh, yeah, thank you. I am proud of that, uh, that I got someone tricked him into sticking around for that long. But uh, I don't always like to say it publicly because I, I don't feel like you hear that and think, oh, who, 26 years, I bet he's a tiger in the bedroom. Yeah. I think, <laughs> were you guys hear that I've been in a heterosexual monogamous relationship for 26 years? Probably what you think is, ah, yeah, I bet he's pretty vanilla in the bedroom. Probably think that guy wears pajamas. And uh, <laughs> I want you to know that shit's not true, okay? I, I have some very nice pajamas, but um, I'm kinky as fuck. <laughs> yeah. I am. And my big kink is I just really want to bang an old lady. And I'm very patient. Thank you for the courtesy laugh. <laughs> Every birthday for my wife, I'm just like, get in there, baby, get in there. Mm, I'm good. Nice. We have a we have a kid who some of you met earlier if you were hanging out in the green room. Uh, made the decision not to hit my kid. I thought that was a rather obvious decision. I didn't struggle with it at all. But uh, I had friends that thought this was a controversial decision. They're like, really? You're not going to hit her? Seriously? You got to hit her. You got to hit her, buddy. And I was like, well, why are you so invested in this? You know. And their only argument in the pro-hitting camp is uh, we were hit. That's what they tell me. You go, hey, bro, bro, dude, bro, 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 dude, bro. <laughs> when we were kids, when we were kids, we got hit. Then I have to sit them down and have that awkward conversation that we are not what I'm aiming for. <laughs> not at all. I had this idea that we raise one generation without hitting them. And uh, let's just see if the world gets a little bit better if these people think that you can solve problems with words, <laughs> you know? And things don't improve, beat the shit out of the next batch. That's fine. <laughs> I'll help you. I'll help you. Boom, you little bastard. Your brother was a big disappointment. Help. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm incredibly proud of my daughter. I'm a, I'm a proud dad. And I think that's my job. My job is to be proud of her no matter what. And again, my friends challenge me on this. They're like, no matter what? And I'm like, yeah, no matter what. And they're like, well, what if she becomes a serial killer? And my first thought is, well, female serial killers are rare. <laughs> and I can see myself. I can see myself bragging someday in the future. Uh, excuse me, that's 17 known victims. <laughs> oh, no. um, I, I saw a lot of you are in Texas. Uh, I am not in the South. The weather here in California is beautiful right now. Um, 
a lot of people here in California are very afraid of the South, but as a comedian, I drive through the South a lot. I travel in the South and I've learned something about the South that not everybody realizes, which is that the South is not actually in the South. The South is about 15 miles outside of any major metropolitan area, <laughs> anywhere in the world. <laughs> Wherever you are right now, I hope you're safe. Get in your car and drive for 15 minutes and you'll see just south as fuck. <laughs> you know? and then get back in your car and come home. Uh, speaking of being on the road, I, uh, I have a very different attitude I've noticed about Starbucks from when I'm home and when I'm on the road. Because at home in Sacramento, I'm like, seriously, Starbucks you need one on every corner? You know, isn't this enough? And then when I'm on the road, I'm like, seriously, no Starbucks this exit? Is that legal? How, how is this legal? This is bullshit. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait till you muster up your courtesy laugh. Um, I'll tell you a quick story. When I was in junior high, uh, I wanted to take band. Surprise! <laughs> um, and that's <laughs> good so that I could start a ska band. Um, but the first day of band, the teacher did something that teachers weren't really doing anymore at that point in the 80s, at least not in California. He asked us to all stand up and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. And this caught me off guard because like I said, we didn't do that anymore. So I stood up and I, and I didn't say the pledge. <laughs> I'm going to just ram through this ending real fast now I got the sound trombone. The teacher tried to inspire me. He told me a story. He told the whole class a story He's, because he saw me not saying the Pledge of Allegiance about when he went to Germany, like many men of his generation, he went to Germany. Uh, he wasn't in the war. He went there afterwards with a jazz band and toured. It was very nice. But he saw the difference between West Germany and East Germany. He sat at the wall at a nice cafe in West Germany and he saw how cold and gray and lifeless East Germany was and, and how beautiful and vibrant West Germany was. And I, and I raised my hand and I said, Mr. Haney, that's a very nice story and, and I feel inspired. I, I just have one question. On what side of that wall do you think they're more likely to force children to pledge their allegiance? <laughs> that's the story of why I don't know how to play the clarinet. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Good night. Lowell Jensen. Yay. Yay. Uh, that's, it. that's the show. Thank you to all the performers. Uh, thank you to Derek Kotwa for the music. Thank you to Richard Goodwin for the technology to make this happen. You guys have heard about the trombone, but this is the man who made it happen. Thank you to uh, Valerie Lopez and Laura Smith. You guys are wonderful producers. Um, and if you guys are watching, thank you guys so much. Venmo, PayPal, hey, how about that? Uh, if not, just tweet uh, us, uh, uh, you know, if you have a Venmo and you all have one cent, send a message, be funny, you know, get out there. Get out there, write us a message, write some money on it. And um, if you'd like to have something to say, say it online. That's what I say, that's my whole thing. Uh, thank you guys so much, we do this every Friday. We'll see you next Friday. Bye. Bye.